Hello and welcome once again to the Waters and Stanton video channel. My name is Peter Waters and my ham radio call sign is Golf 3 Oscar Juliet Victor. We're going to talk about aerials again. And I was on the RSGB website and they publish a, a bi-monthly magazine called Radcom Basics, which I think is aimed at the beginner. And I happened to see they mentioned the W3EDP antenna. Now, it's an antenna which... Uh, was vaguely familiar to me. I thought, well, I recognise that, but I couldn't quite place it. So I uh, had a look uh, on the internet and found that the W3EDP antenna was an antenna I used many years ago. And it's, uh, it's an interesting antenna, actually. Interesting that this antenna is still in use because it was actually first published in QST in 1936, believe it or not. That's... <laughs> It's a long time ago. It's a long time for an antenna to survive. So I'm going to put up on the screen here the original layout of the W3EDP antenna. Now, as you can see, it's 84 foot uh, of wire uh, fed with an ATU or an antenna matching unit, and it's got a counterpoise of 17 foot. And it covers all bands. Well, I say all bands. Um, in 1936, we didn't have 15 metres, and I'm not sure that 10 metres was used that much, because 10 metres was quite a high frequency in those days, and I suspect it wasn't a particularly popular band. But anyway, we don't know about that. Um, but it certainly would have been used on 80, 40 and 20, which, by coincidence, is the bands that it probably works best on anyway. So let's take a look at this antenna. Now, it's described as an all-band antenna with a counterpoise, but I'm not so sure that actually is a counterpoise. The overall length of the antenna, including the counterpoise, is 100 feet, and by coincidence, that's almost the same length as G5RV. Well, there's no obvious connection there, and in fact, the G5RV didn't, ex didn't exist in 1936. But I think that... Um, counterpoise, that 17 foot counterpoise, was there to actually enable the antenna to present a medium impedance match to that matching unit that you see on the diagram there. Counterpoises are normally used to sort of replace or supplement the earth system and I think 17 foot of wire is not going to be very effective on an antenna so long. I think that antenna is more like an off center fed dipole. If you imagine that uh, wire stretched out, I think we're dealing with an off center fed dipole rather than an antenna with a counterpoise. And I think that arrangement evolved in order to get a decent match. Now, if you look at the diagram and go from the far end of the antenna, um, 66 foot along from the right towards the left, you arrive at a full wave on 20 meters, which is a high voltage point. You also arrive at a half wave on 40 meters, which again is a high voltage point. Um, and if you move down to the antenna matching unit, you arrive at a low impedance point on uh, 20 meters, and a fairly low impedance point on 40 meters. And also by coincidence, it's a fairly low impedance point on 80 meters. So that will enable that antenna to present a fairly low impedance on those three bands. And as I said, 15 meters didn't exist then, 20, uh, 10 meters was probably not used much. And of course the walk bands didn't exist. So it's highly likely the W3EDP used that antenna on 80, 40 and 20 and it would seem to work pretty well. I'm still not sure about the counterpoise and the suggestion is that actually W3EDP messed around with various lengths until he found a length that worked. So that is presumably how the antenna evolved. But then it changed. Over time it, it was changed to a balanced line feed to 66 foot of wire. Now, ironically, 
If you feed that antenna with 60, with a 17 foot of balanced line, you still end up with an overall length of 100 foot of wire. That uh, counterpoise was sort of moved through 90 degrees to form a balanced feed. And I think it worked quite well, or it would work quite well, or it does work quite well. I see no reason why it shouldn't work quite well. But it is actually then an end-fed ZAP antenna, surely. Now, the performance of the antenna can't be the same because originally we had 84 foot of wire as a radiator and this so-called 17 foot counterpoise. Now we end up with an antenna that is only 66 foot long and got a 17 foot feeder, even though the total amount of wire used is the same. So the actual radiation pattern would have changed somewhat, but we end up with, I think, more like an NFED ZEP, and I don't think it's really a W3 EDP antenna, even though it is claimed to have evolved into what we now see. But nevertheless, that itself is an interesting antenna because you've got 66 foot length of wire, which is a, is a full wave on 20 meters, which means it's a voltage point, goes 17 foot down the feeder and you come to a low impedance point. On 40 meters, it's a half wave length of wire. Go down 17 feet and you've got a medium impedance, fairly easy to match. And on 80 meters, it's a quarter wave. Now a quarter wave is current fed, um, so it's a low impedance at the point at which the uh, balance line is attached. 17 foot down comes up to a medium impedance. So really and truly, you've got a medium impedance antenna for 80, 40 and 20. And you can quite easily feed that antenna using a four to one ballon. Now, if you do that on 80, 40 and 20, you're not gonna get the same low VSWR. You should get a low VSWR on 20 meters. On 40 and 80, it won't be, certainly won't be a low impedance. It'll be medium, medium impedance. And you may get a VSWR of four or five to one. Shock, horror, you might say. Oh dear, we can't have that. Well. Let me first of all just play you something I recorded uh, a couple of months ago on the question of VSWR and losses on feeder cable. Because what you do, you put a 4 to 1, VSW, uh, four to one ballon in at the feed point, so rather at the base of the uh, balance line, and then run a coax back to your transceiver. Anyway, take a look at this and look at the actual losses that you get on a, I think with a 5 to 1 VSWR. Take a look. There's plenty of coax uh, loss calculators on the internet. I've selected one here and I've assumed you're going to have a 25 foot length of RG58 going from that balance line back to your transceiver and you're going to have a 5 to 1 VSWR. Oh dear, 5 to 1. But look at the figures. On 14 megahertz, you get about 0.8 of a dB loss. And even at 28 megahertz, you only get just a smidge over 1 dB loss. It's neither here nor there. Now, the interesting thing is that I think on 80, 40 and 20, you should be able to use the internal matching uh, network of your transceiver. Most transceivers got a matching network inside or called auto ACU. And that, I think, should match the antenna on 80, 40 and 20 with a four to one ballon at the bottom of that feeder. 15 meters may not be so easy. Uh, 10 meters could be a bit of a problem. Um, it's, a tr it's trial and error. And as for the walk bands, well again, uh, a bit of trial and error. It may not be too bad on the, on the walk bands. It may not be too bad on uh, 17 meters. But if your transceiver can't cope, you could use uh, an external antenna matching unit, and there's plenty of those about. I'll put one up on the screen here, which we, we sell um, by LDG. It's an automatic antenna matching unit, and I think that would probably would cope on all bands. So it's an interesting antenna. Um, the W3EDP, has it evolved into a 66-foot uh, length of wire fed with 17 foot of uh, balance line? I'm not entirely convinced. I can see how the progression has occurred, but I think we've simply got an NFED ZEP. Anyway, 
Both antennas are quite interesting because the original W3 EDP you could actually feed with a 4 to 1 ballon and a bit of coax back to the transceiver. So it's worth trying that. If you've got a smaller garden then I think that the end fed ZEP is going to be the better option but both antennas I think warrant a look. So thank you for watching this video. Hope it's given you some ideas. Hope it's given you some food for thought and you decide whether the W3 EDP has evolved or it has simply turned into an NFED ZEP. You tell me. In the meantime, enjoy your ham radio, you take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.